Okay, finally, finally I get back to my garage. Uh, those jukeboxes kick my butt. Four jukeboxes, hundreds of parts, taking half a dozen pictures of each part, putting it on eBay. So as you can see, I've been storing up boxes. <laughs> I've been throwing boxes and packing material and everything on top of a car. Yes, there's a car under there. <laughs> so, now that I've gotten rid of 99% of the jukebox stuff, I still have a few pieces left on that shelf. Uh, I don't want this shelf in the middle of the garage. <laughs> so I've got to get it back there against the wall or in the other room or somewhere, but because of the jukeboxes, like I say, it's just been throwing everything aside until I can get it all gone and now it is. So now it's time to clean this up. Well, now you can actually see there is a car in there. I still have a lot of work left to do, but I am clearing it out pretty quick. On the other side of the car, you can see the car is sitting this way in the garage. There's a whole lot of car parts. So I need to organize those too. I've got two rear ends. Yeah, there's just a whole bunch more stuff. Uh, so I'm going to be going on eBay, so I'll be keeping a good inventory of boxes to get rid of that stuff. And let's get to work on this Jeepster. <laughs> Voila! I have car again. I have my workbench that rolls around with parts on it. I've got an engine and transmission and a rear end. I don't have chaos anymore. Finally, jukebox is gone. I need to get back to work on the Jeepster. Wow, I can't believe how much time has gone by since the last time I worked on this. Uh, last time I put in the actual suspension cradle and, and the pockets mocked everything all up. I was missing a lot of parts. And I had ordered all of this stuff a year ago last November during COVID. And I only got about half the parts. <laughs> I didn't get the hubs, the, uh, I did get the spindles. I didn't get any of the brake mechanism. So I kind of set the project aside waiting for all those parts. It took seven months before I finally got everything. Container ship sitting out to sea, everything on hold. Well, then I ended up with the jukeboxes. You might know that story. <laughs> so that kind of delayed everything too. So here I am finally getting back to it. I'm not exactly sure what ride height I want to put this at. So I'm going to set everything back up again before I completely weld it in. Because last time, all I did is tack welded all these parts in. And then, like I said, I waited for everything to show up. So now that it's all here, I want to mock it all back up again. Uh, brakes, everything. I want to have it completely assembled, put the tires on, get an idea of everything I mean to the point I need to put the fenders on I need to know how much travel I have for the tires to hit the fenders uh, the tires that I have are actually about two inches overall height larger than what I'm actually going to run on the car so it'll be a good test uh, it'll get me an inch higher off the ground clearance and it'll give me an inch of spacing that I know if the tire is, is bottomed out and it's rubbing on the fender, I'll be okay with the other tires. I'm not exactly sure what offsets I'm going to need for my wheels yet, so I haven't got those orders. So that's another thing I need to do. I need to get all of this mocked up, and then I can figure out where my tires sit, what my offsets need to be, what wheels I can order, and we can move on from there. So let's get this all put on, get it all mocked up, get the nose on this thing and see how it looks. I've got everything all mocked up again, the way it was almost a year ago. 
and everything kind of where it should be, waiting for these. And I am really, really impressed. Uh, it was worth the wait. These hubs are beautiful. Billet aluminum turn, races in it, the studs. That is a really nice piece. <laughs> Very impressive. Came with the bearings. I won't grease them at this point. I just want to mock everything up and make sure everything fits. Uh, it has a, a seal. You can tap into the back side. Well, I'll do those at a later point too. Lightweight, it's nice stuff. Very nice. It's tough working without instructions. <laughs> it's one thing I found about uh, these parts that I bought. Uh, they didn't come with very good instructions. If you see back in my other video, I had to do a lot of research to figure out how to put this all together. And I'm going to have to do a little trial and error to see which way this goes on for the brakes, too. So another thing that took a long time to get were the rotors. But they were also worth the wait too. Most of the kits came with a 9 or 10 inch rotor. These are almost 12 inches. So that's a really nice rotor compared to the competition. And the precision on how it fits that hub, super nice. Also, from the long wait, I ended up with two sets of rotors. I don't know if there was a mix-up, <laughs> whether there's two different types. Um, so that's something I'll have to compare as well. It's definitely a lot nicer caliper. It looks like they probably mount about the same. But these are upgraded. These are not. It is a universal fit. It's just a matter of whether you put the bleeder on or the, the brake line. So it fits both ways. It doesn't appear to matter on that set. Pads are larger. So the bleeder goes up, but it doesn't appear that it makes any difference. So for the mock up, we're just going to put it together. The brake system looks really good. I like the alignment of it all. There is contact on the lower control arm. So I'm thinking that this bracket I put on this way needs to be put on this way. Yeah, so this should be on the upside. Trial and error. I'll just leave all this together, put it over there, and see how it feels. That's the ticket. That gives me the clearance I need.
So these tires and wheels that I have, these are the original Willys tires and wheels, and they're a 27 inch tire. I'm planning on dropping down to a 25 inch tire, but I wanna lower it just a little bit more. Right now, this is about what the ride height would be. I've got both the upper and lower control arms tracking about where they should be. I have two inch drop spindles, so that has lowered the nose of this down about two inches. I will drop another inch with the tires. I had to remove the brake calipers because they don't fit into these Willys wheels. Uh, they are a 14 inch wheel and I'm planning on going up to a 16 inch wheel. So that's another thing I need to make sure since this does have the 12 inch rotors since this does have the 12 inch rotors, I'm going to need to make sure that they will clear a 16 inch wheel. I might have to go up to a 17 or 18, but I'm pretty sure the specs say a 15 inch wheel. So I should be plenty good with the 16, but it's one of the things I have to verify. So everything's looking really good. It's, it's right where I was expecting it to be. I was thinking hopefully just a little bit lower, but there may be some things I can play with to literally lower the shocks and the springs another inch. It puts the upper control arms on a lot more of an angle that I'm not really happy with. So I'm going to work with this. Cross my fingers, this is the way it ends up being. I need to get the nose back on this, get the fenders on, get the nose, get the hood, and see how everything lines up. So we got one side on. Just wanted to kind of get it up there to see how much clearance I had. Uh, it gives me about four inches of travel. And with a one inch smaller tire, that will give me about five inches of travel. So I'll have to check that and see where my bump stops will be so I can protect the fender. That is exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> but a real happy accident that I was not expecting. I thought I would have to cut this off. But as you can see, these, these stick up quite a bit and they're pretty intrusive in that fender well. But it's a perfect fit. I might have to adjust it a little bit once I get the nose on, but that's real exciting. Well, I got a little excited, got a little ahead of myself. By the time I put the nose in place, that is now resting up on top of that upper control arm hat. So I, it's two things. I can trim the hat because I've got plenty there to trim from, or I can cut away that inner fender well and bring that inner fender well out. Either way, I could do it so that it looks factory. It really just comes down to what's going to be the easiest. But these are the things that I have to check before I burn in the frame and completely weld in those upper hats. So I'll, I'll give it some thought, decide which way I want to go. Since I got a lot of welding to do on those upper hats, I might just trim those off and leave these fender well stock. We'll see. But now you can see with the nose on, that should be sitting on the frame. So it's about inch and a half too high. So it's it throws all the body lines off. So I just need to get in and make that settle down. It's pretty exciting. Starting to see a, a completion to this front end and I can get all that Mustang II suspension burned in. It's pretty exciting to start seeing some of this all come together again. I need to now take this all back apart, decide what I'm going to do with those upper hats and then weld everything in because it, it all looks good. I don't think there's anything I need to adjust. Uh, while I have all this front end on, I wanna check the alignment and the depth front to back for the, the new engine and transmission. 
That'll be one more thing I've got to do before I completely weld that in, just in case I've got to move it forward or backward a little bit. I definitely don't want to go back, but there's plenty of room to bring everything forward if I need to. So that's it for this episode. Appreciate you watching. Goodbye for now.